What defines an elementary step within an organic reaction mechanism? What makes it elementary? And how do we know when we're looking at a step whether it corresponds to a single elementary step or not? The essential answer to this question is that an individual elementary step within a mechanism can be associated with a single orbital interaction or at most two orbital interactions happening simultaneously. Not only does this approach allow us to identify an elementary step as such as elementary, but it also helps us think about what drives elementary steps and gives us a very deep picture of what they look like as overlap between filled and empty molecular orbitals. So while the orbital interaction approach does draw on our understanding of orbitals, and that can get a little bit theoretically complicated, what we gain from this approach is a really deep insight into organic reaction mechanisms that allows us to generalize and reason by analogy. What exactly do we mean when we say that an elementary step corresponds to an orbital interaction? More specifically, what we're referring to is the overlap of a filled molecular orbital with an empty molecular orbital. And the numbers and types of these orbitals are limited as long as we take a localized approach. The filled MO contains a pair of electrons and is thus associated with the nucleophile, the electron donor, while the empty MO, which lacks electrons, must then be associated with the electrophile or the electron sink or acceptor. Because the numbers and types of these orbitals are limited, we can actually enumerate all the possibilities just by identifying the three different types of filled molecular orbitals, sigma, pi, and n, and the three types of empty molecular orbitals, sigma star, pi star, and a. And each of these, as you see in the pictures below, is associated with a specific type of electron flow. For example, whenever a sigma bond is involved as an electron source, we'll see a curved arrow like this, starting at a sigma bond. We can draw without doing any calculations at all, and just recalling the general shape of a sigma orbital, the shape of the orbital that contains these donated electrons, which is shown here. Likewise, when you see an arrow starting at a double or triple bond, you know that that's associated with a pi electron source. And once again, we can draw a molecular orbital that contains those donated electrons just from our general understanding of what a pi orbital looks like. Here I was a little bit lax in putting together this picture. These should really be connected into sort of a hot dog type of shape rather than two separate lobes, as you see here. And finally, whenever you see an arrow starting at a pair of electrons, this indicates an N, or non-bonding electron source. And from this arrow alone and our general understanding of N orbitals as hybrids, we can draw a picture of the orbital that contains those donated electrons without ever doing any calculations. This is the beauty of this approach. We get spatial electronic information without having to do any complicated calculations, merely by keeping in mind the shapes of these general molecular orbitals. The situation is analogous for the empty orbitals, or the acceptors, but the arrows here are a little bit more complicated, since the curved arrows typically show, for example, the acceptance of electrons at one of the atoms of a bond, and the bond breaking with the electrons going towards the other atom. That's what we're seeing here. This first case shows the breaking of a single bond, or sigma bond, between A and B. This indicates the involvement of a sigma star electron acceptor orbital. This is an empty orbital whose general shape we've looked at before it looks something like this when it's made of a pair of hybrids. And as we saw in the filled case, we can draw this picture just by recognizing that these curved arrows correspond to a sigma star electron acceptor and recalling the general shape of a sigma star orbital. When an atom accepts a pair of electrons and a pi bond associated with that atom breaks toward the other atom in the pi bond, the empty orbital involved is a pi star acceptor. And once again, we can draw a picture of the empty atomic orbital accepting those electrons just by recalling the general shape of a pi star orbital. And finally, when an atom that lacks an octet of electrons simply accepts a pair from a Lewis space like shown, we can infer the involvement of an empty A or empty atomic orbital, whose general shape looks like this. It's generally just an empty 2p atomic orbital. In any actual reaction mechanism, of course, we'll combine the red and the blue electron flows. And we've talked previously about how to identify donors and acceptors from curved arrows. So for example, in this case, we see that the source is a non-bonding electron pair, or an n orbital, and the sink is a sigma star orbital. 
What this system now allows us to do is draw a picture of how the molecules are oriented as this step occurs. This gives us some useful information. For example, it tells us that the non-bonding orbital that houses the pair of electrons donated toward the xy bond must be coaxial with the sigma star orbital of the xy bond. This allows for maximum orbital overlap between the two. It also tells us that A approaches the backside of X since the larger lobe of the XY antibonding orbital is outside of the bond rather than inside it. The other thing we get from this approach is all of the intuition about energies, electronegativity, etc. that we have from a general understanding of how orbitals work. For example, identifying A as the nucleophile here and its non-bonding lone pair hybrid orbital as the real electron source, as the filled orbital involved in this electron flow. We can understand why making A less electronegative, which drives up its orbital energies, would encourage this step to occur, would make this step more favorable. Likewise, we can understand why converting A from an sp to an sp2 to an sp3 hybridized atom encourages this step to occur as well, as we drive that orbital energy up of the filled or electron source orbital. So the benefits of this system are both spatial, in the sense that we can draw a picture of what's going on and orient the molecules as they are actually oriented as the reaction occurs, and energetic. They give us insights into what's driving the reaction and what makes an elementary step more or less favorable. And here when we say favorable, we really mean kinetically, since what we're referring to are orbitals in the reactants. As the reaction occurs, the reactants change structure into the products of the elementary step, and so this entire analysis really is grounded in kinetics rather than thermodynamics. That said, because the two are often correlated, we can make good educated guesses of thermodynamics from some of these considerations as well.